Okay. And I think we'll get our guest on here. Amir, can you hear me, sir? Hello. How are you? It's James. Hi, Giving you a call for your uh, radio interview. How are you, sir? Good, good. Let me uh, get all of our shiny, happy, fun people here in the uh, <laughs> in the in the call here. We uh, we are going to be joined by uh, Dan Perkins and IQ Al Rizzoli here, uh, my co-hosts for this hour as well on our big broadcast. And you can get a hold of us online, jiggyjaguar.com. You can also find us jiggyjaguar dot uh, U.S., I believe, for our app, and uh, lots of things going on around the world. Everybody's locked in, and everybody's, you know, they got nothing else better to do than to listen to me on iHeartRadio, and uh, we are going to go to our first guest here in just a few seconds. If you want to find us, uh, find us in both the app stores, iPod, and Google Play, and uh, we are going to connect with our, hopefully, our co-hosts here in just a few seconds as the uh, as the old skip skype is working and uh i think we might have some people maybe iq can you hear me sir yes uh, look at that dan is also with us i think <laughs> and i believe dan is with us dan can you hear me yeah look at that i think we've got dan it's calling dan maybe it says it's calling dan and uh james yes i've got you good you have, do you have iq i do have iq yes. and i've got john and uh we've got our guest he uh joins us today here on our big broadcast coast to coast and border to border on iheart radio am fm 24 com, and of course uh 50 plus am fm stations across the country and around the world and uh i always butcher your name so I'm going to let the guests do their own introduction. Go ahead and jump in there, my friend, and give us a brief introduction on hey there, yourself. It's, it's Armin Brott. Nice to be on Armin, the show. Armin Brott. Why do I know you? <laughs> Why do you know me? I, I don't know. <laughs> this, is, this is Dan. Just, I, I guess I have, I have one of those voices. I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I, do, I do as many interviews as... Some people think as God does in a week. <laughs> have we have we ever crossed paths? Do you know Dan Perkins? You know, it sounds very familiar. I, I'm the author of a, a whole bunch of books on parenting, fatherhood in particular. Do a lot of work in men's health. So if, if you've ever had anybody on to talk about fatherhood, it may have Absolutely. been me. If it wasn't, it should have been. Should have been if it wasn't. <laughs> Actually, we had we had twice. Uh, and I did him on some other interviews. The author of the Boy Crisis. Oh yeah. Now. Uh, and, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 no problem. Go, go ahead and tell us about your books here, my friend. Well, there's a whole series of them. Uh, they start. It's the first one in the series is called The Expectant Father, and it deals with pregnancy and childbirth, looking at it from the dad's perspective, how he can be involved in the pregnancy, how to make it his own, how he can understand what he's going through, how the whole process of becoming a father is going to affect him, and then how he can be the best, most involved dad for himself and for his kid and also for his partner. And then it, the, the process picks up after that. There's a new father, a dad's guide to the first year, which takes the first 12 months, continuing that whole theme of what's going on with the dad, what's going on with the baby, what's going on with the partner, how to how to be involved at every step of the way, what's appropriate to do with a kid at a particular age, what's not. And then there's one for the toddler years and one for the school years, one for military dads who are deployed and away from their kids for extended periods of time, and one for single dads. And it's uh, just been a whole a whole uh, life's work of, of creating these resources for dads who really have been letting me know for years that they, they need more information than they're getting. You know, if I might, Jim, we had a guest on Jim's show a couple of weeks ago who uh, was talking about abuse. And he was talking about recent studies done by the Center for Disease and Control. And historically, abuse was, was looked at as women and children. And uh, the most recent data shows that more 
men are abused by women than women by men by almost a million incidents a year. But the greatest amount of child abuse comes from either single or gay moms, which just blew me away. And, and we know that in the black community, there's a great deal of resentment that the central government through its welfare programs took the dads out of the relationship with the family and replaced it with the government. And I guess yeah. with that as background, and having not read your, your books, uh, I'm guessing, but what do, you, what do you think about what's going on of the, perhaps not the right word, but it's the only word I can think of, of the surrender of the responsibility of involvement in males in their children's lives? Well, I think it's a tragedy of incredible, incredible scope, and I think that it, probably if you think about it, everybody would, would agree to it. I mean, you should look at the, the crime rates in inner cities. If you just look at I can rattle off some statistics for you, but I hope they'll sink in with people. About 75% of inmates who are in prison grew up in a family without a father. The vast majority of murderers grew up in a family without a father, and we, we, that's that's what's happening when kids are growing up. You've got all these kids growing up without fathers. They they gravitate towards a a charismatic, mostly violent gang leader who is going to show them how to be a man. And the reality is, if you have a father involved in the family, the father is going to show the kids what's involved in being a man. And it does not involve beating people up. It just doesn't. Yeah. And uh, so I think that's that's one of the critical things. And if you look at at kids, I mean, it starts, there's just so many different places. Kids who are actively involved with their fathers do better in school. They stay in school longer. They're more likely to graduate. They're more likely to do better. They're more likely to go on to college. Kids who go to college have, have better health. They take better care of themselves. They have greater longevity. They, have, they make more money over the course of their careers. I mean, all of these things come, come back. And it's, it's one of these things that somebody who does a lot of research, it's, it's important. I, I need to constantly make sure that I understand the difference between something that is – there's a, a correlation, means it's related somewhat, and something that's a causation. So you can't say specifically that having a father in the home or, or not in the home is going to produce or, or not produce certain kinds of results. But the, oh, the evidence is overwhelming that when a father is actively involved and a father's in the home – the kids do better. There's just no question about that. And when you do with what I think the government has done, and it probably started off with, with good intentions, but the, the upshot has been, particularly in the African-American community and other communities that, where they're low income, yep. is the, they've been incentivized, incentivized to take the dad out of the family. And so what happens is you've got a bunch of guys who make a choice. They say, well, my, my wife or my girlfriend and her kids can get government benefits, but only if I'm not living in the house. Can you imagine? I mean, it's just so awful. So, so what happens is the, the responsible thing to do because he's not working because unemployment in inner cities is sky high, especially now, is the most responsible thing for that man to do is to not be in the house with his kids. It's just, it's just so twisted. You don't even know what to make of it exactly. But the bottom line of it is that kids are suffering greatly and families are suffering greatly because of the dad being excluded and driven out of the home. I, uh, I have written uh, a bunch of commentaries on the issue that you're talking about. And um, a lot of the research that I've done uh, points, in the, uh, points in the direction of why we're having the outcomes that we have to um, Planned Parenthood and their movement into the inner cities many, many decades ago, trying to convince black women that they were in control of their bodies and that the, the male didn't count. And so that's why the abortion rate in the inner city, especially with minority black women, is twice the population rate. It's because they've been indoctrinated through Planned Parenthood. These are reproductive rights. They're not anything else. 
and so they feel like they're being empowered, the black women inner city, they're being empowered by being able to get rid of an unwanted pregnancy. Yet it sends a horrible message to the other siblings that are in the house and to the, to the woman. And we have a society that, that is still, I mean, we have, this gentleman told us, we have had for a number of years $500 million in a federal budget for abuse of women, even at a time when men are more abused by women than uh, men abuse women. And we have a senator who wants to double the budget to a billion dollars a year on female abuse, but nothing for the issue of male abuse and nothing for studying the families. Where did we go wrong? Well, we grew wrong. <laughs> We went wrong. I think it's a question of, of paternalism, and I, th- I know that paternalism become, it gets a, a, a bad rap in a lot of places, but there's a lot of men who believe that their role is to be provider protector, and, and part of the protector thing is to protect women and, and protect women and children. And so I think the, the senators and, and the other lawmakers who more likely in generations past have been predominantly male have said we need to protect these people. Even at our own expense. I mean, just a, a slight diversion. That if you just take a look at, at what goes on with breast cancer and prostate cancer, just about the same number of people die of, of prostate cancer as breast cancer. But breast mm-hmm. cancer gets something like ten times the funding, right? Right. And mm-hmm. and the vast majority of the male lawmakers, senators, and and uh, rep- House of Representatives, the vast majority of them will develop prostate cancer at some point in their life. Right, mm-hmm. but we are so we we're supposed to be tough. We don't have any problems, so we're not going to acknowledge that that men need prostate cancer research. We're not. There are seven different offices of women's health in the federal government, right? With budgets, uh, in, including NIH, which does a tremendous amount of research and wonderful good. But those but those offices have budgets in the hundreds of millions of dollars. There are exactly zero offices of men's health anywhere in the government. And right. so we are so busy focusing on protecting women and children that we are ignoring men. And what happens is when we, when we ignore the violence that's committed by women, those women cannot get the help they need, and they need help. Uh, the, you know, the violence is, is, is not always something that people need to be locked up for. So it, it's, it's a tragedy, and I, I, I think it's fair to say that, that – a, a man abusing a woman is probably more likely to do more damage, physical damage, than a woman abusing a man, generally speaking. However, mm-hmm. that, does not ex- that does not excuse it. That, that right. when a woman takes a smack at a man, she's trying to hit him. She just isn't as strong as he is. But right. most men don't abuse anybody. And I think it's – and I've been writing about this as well for years. It's, it's awful that we allow a, a problem of that – scope to say that we're saying that there are are at least as many men you said a million more cases over the course of a year but you know just for the sake of discussion at least as many men are being abused as women and there are no or or there are a few very very few shelters for men where where a man can go and take his children with him to to seek refuge from a woman who is violent yeah and and, and we, we are hurting we are hurting families we're hurting men we're hurting kids yeah, and the, 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 I guess the point was that the, the, the domestic violence on children, uh, the number one, uh, the, the largest majority of domestic violence on children comes, and Jim and IQ were on the show, from uh, single and gay women. The mothers create a much higher level of violence against their children. But I want to go back to another question. Yes. I'm, I'm concerned that... And these are going to probably sound like crazy correlation, correlations, but I think they are correlated. I think the decline of the leadership of the male of the species is manifested in the tremendous amount of advertising that we do in this country because men have low testosterone. I think that the power and influence 
of women and the government against men for women has began to neutralize or neuter men for decades from being men. Well, I think I, I'm, I'm not sure I 100 percent agree with you. I, I think what, what the issue is, is that we have we have told men that there is something wrong with being male. There's this whole issue about toxic masculinity, right. which is a phrase that makes me want to scream and throw something through a window. Because it, 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 it's, it, a violent it, it sends that. Exactly. Oh, I, well, I got to tell you, just I just I'll get back to the whole thing with toxic masculinity. But I, I wrote an article years ago about exactly what we just were talking about about more men being abused by women, and I got a phone call when I back in the days when a phone call uh, and a voicemail, which I, I tragically didn't save, but it was a woman saying, "Women are not violent. I don't know how you could write about women being violent, and we are going to come and kill you." Right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you you completely wow. you don't understand what irony means? I mean, it's it, it's just crazy. But amazing. Anyway, the thing about you know, <laughs> the, this culture of that where we were constantly talking about toxic masculinity, there's something wrong with men. The Me Too movement, all men are bad, all men are abusers. It's a terrible thing. And at the same time, we tell men that really the only way they can they can be a man is by having a large penis and having mm-hmm. sex twelve times a day. And so, mm-hmm. so all men, men are constantly told that they're inadequate. And if you, if you, just any kind of television program, just think of how many penis jokes there are, or how many, how many women are talking about they're rating men based on how big he is, or yeah. whatever. And it's, it's insulting to a, a great majority of people, but it, it reinforces this issue that the only value of being in being a man is what's going on between your belt and your knees, and it's. You know, it's it's really demeaning. It demeans everybody, but it demeans men in particular. But it also tells men that well, there's a solution to that. You can send twenty nine ninety five, and you can get a bottle of pills that may or may not work. <laughs> You'll at least be, you know. We have got a great guest with us today. He is a men's health and uh, rights analyst. We've got Armin Brought with us today, and IQ. Uh, listening to to Armin, what 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 what, what do you have for him? I love what he's telling. It's very interesting. Like the previous person who was telling us that men are abused. But you know, this masculinity garbage, it only happens in the Western world. In my Eastern world, if some woman talks the way a woman in Western world talks, she would be terminated. I don't want to speak about termination in the sense of abuse. Yeah. But I mean, what is happening in America? is obscene, absolutely obscene. It's illogical, it's immoral. And by whom? By the leftist media, yes. by the feminists. And these feminists are obscenely hypocritical. Why do I say that? Very much so. 750 million women in Islam are oppressed. Not a single voice comes from the so-called feminists. Not once ever. Yeah. Nobody asks the question, why aren't you doing it? Back to you, sir. Let me, can I ask a question? Yes. Yeah. J- jump in there. We, we've got a little bit more time with him. I know that he's got to leave at, 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 at the middle of the hour. But, yes, go, go ahead, Dan. I want to I wanna deal real quick with the dichotomy that I see going on. We have a woman who went into federal court in New York City, filed an affidavit and a complaint that Joe Biden put his hand underneath her dress and put his fingers inside her vagina. And the women's movement is giving Joe Biden and the news media is giving Joe Biden a pass. That is an obvious conflict of their principles. If Hillary says women need to be believed, I guess only if it's against the Republican, never against the Democrat. What message does that send to both men and women about our criminal justice system and the value proposition, as IQ says, of the, of the radical left? 
Well, I think it, it's it's really sad that it has become a political issue. It's really sad to see people like Alyssa Milano, who was sitting in the Brett Kavanaugh hearings prominently so she could be seen from pretty much every camera angle and constantly going about how women should believe, should be believed. And all these politicians, Maisie Hirono, the senator from Hawaii, it, men should just shut up and women should always be believed. And why would a woman get up yes. there in front of everything and, and tell a lie? Except, and then you realize it's except if the man who's being accused is a Democrat. And it was the same sort of thing when Bill Clinton was being accused of all sorts of stuff. And Hillary was, was taking the side of Bill, right? And, and, but mm -hmm. then when, when the situation has changed, when it's a Republican who's under attack, it's we're going to believe all women. It's it's one of the things that I think is going to have some negative effect on the left, and I hope it does. I hope it gets the left, the people on the left, to be able to think a little bit more clearly and about what they're doing and the inconsistency of things. But we're actually, in 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 a way, it's it's a good thing because they're starting to talk about how well we need to have a rule of law and we need to have a presumption of innocence and let's listen to all women as we should, but let's also listen to the guy's side. But the strangest thing is nobody has asked Joe Biden to comment on this. <laughs> and it's the same. If you remember during the debates when Bernie and Elizabeth Sanders were going at it, and Elizabeth Sanders said, um, you, Elizabeth you said no women could, w w women, Elizabeth Warren, you're right, I'm sorry. Uh, no women could hold this job. A woman, woman couldn't do the job. And then the, the person who was doing, uh, running the debate said, well, how did you react when, when he said that, and even though Bernie had just denied it? And afterwards, Warren says to Sanders, you just called me a liar on national television. And he, he got shut up, but he was, he was trying to say, well, you just called me a liar on national television. <laughs> and and it, it really it put them in a very difficult situation. Well, yeah, uh, the left is going to have to come to terms with this. But, but before, before we let our guest go, I want to let John jump in there. Mosier, do you have anything for, for our guest? Okay, now um, this is going to sound kind of weird, but this happened to a friend of mine. Um, he's um, of the alternative lifestyle. He's gay. But his more a feminine other half when they were... Uh-oh. His Skype cut out on us. Damn it. <laughs> I, 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 I really wanted to hear that question. <laughs> we'll see if we'll see if John's uh, internet comes back here. Uh, you know, we, can I can I comment on something that IQ said a minute ago? Yes, go go ahead and tell tell John's tell John's Skype corrects itself. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, IQ mentioned something that I think was really important that there are 750 million women in Islam who are being abused. I, I don't know. I can't speak to that exact number, but it's a lot. I think that it's fair to say that the women in Islam are not treated as equals. And there's a, f a female genital mutilation and having to wear the burqas and, and a lot, it can't drive in Saudi Arabia. A lot of things where women are, are not treated as equals. And the left has been largely absent from the discussion about that. And it's absolutely shocking that that we we are going on and, and having the violence against women act and all these other kinds of things protections for women in this country but they will not talk about what's going on with women in islam and it's particularly atrocious because they are women of color and they are a very a highly protected group in the world of intersectionality can i jim can i play devil's advocate yes jump in there and uh, then i then, uh, I, then i'll let john jump in because i think his skype got corrected so go ahead yeah I, I know this is going to sound really, really weird to say this, but what, 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 was, what we were just discussing is the world has to conform to our standards. <laughs> we, we set the moral standard of how women should be treated, yet these people have been living under their laws and their rules governing the relationship between men and women for 1,200 years. Yeah. We've only been around on around a few hundred years. So to me, I'm not saying that I think it's, that it's wrong of the way they treat women. I'm trying to understand that as a culture that has grown up for centuries under these beliefs, we don't have the right to go in and try and impose our culture on them. 
Well, you could say that from the other side, though, that the the Judaic Judaism has been around for longer than than Islam. Christianity has been around for longer than Islam, and most of Europe is Christian. And uh, women in in Israel, which is in pretty much the same neighborhood, but very different as far as uh, history goes, women are treated extremely well in Israel and and throughout yeah. Europe. So, I think the fact that Islam has been around for for less time, or has been around longer than the United States, is mm-hmm. irrelevant because the, it's the culture, the Western culture that we live in in the United States, has been around longer. And I, I don't know that, that that Islam needs another 700 years to straighten itself out. I hope not. Mm. Okay. Yes, I, uh, I, I, I. <laughs> You're not saying anything, Armin, that that we don't uh, that that we <laughs> we don't agree with here, my friend. Uh, we have we have got a great. Did John bring it back? Uh, John Skype died. I think he's probably rebooting his computer. But uh, okay. Well, uh, um, Dan, you want to ask uh, one more question here before we let uh, Armin go? Because I know we've all we've got him for a little yeah, bit of time here. Okay, I, 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 I got time. I, I, okay. I'll be interested to hearing you about your books and where you can get them. I'm an avid reader besides being an author myself. I, uh, I wonder what's going to happen and dealing with the contemporary environment and we're right now today. I read stories all the time about the divorce rate apparently going up. Um, people saying, why did I ever marry this guy after being sequestered with him for four or five st- six weeks so there's a lot of destruction and physical abuse taking place in this confinement do you think our society is going to change once we come out of this on the other side i think it's going to change i think we're all realizing at this point that that the person that we think we want to spend every single minute with may not be the person that we really should spend every single minute with and that we need to have friends in our lives for other purposes that it, it, it's naive to go into a relationship thinking that your your spouse will satisfy all of your needs. We all know instinctively that you have certain friends that are really great for going out and seeing a movie with, and certain friends that are going out that are fantastic to go have a beer with, and other friends that are great to have over and, and play poker with. You can't necessarily live with all of them. And it's the same thing with your, with your wife or your husband. They, that person may not be able to and probably can't satisfy every single one of your needs and it's it's silly to think that they can so we need to spend time with other people whether it's on skype or zoom or on the phone but it's uh, it's really i think it's, it's becoming a very interesting educational experience in learning the the value of friendships outside of the relationship it doesn't mean that the that the marriage can't work it just means that you can't spend all of your time with one person it's crazy to think you could good thank you well uh armin before we let you go my friend uh how do we find you online get your books everything be involved with you sure well mrdad.com mrdad.com is where all of my fatherhood books are the uh, first year book the pregnancy books uh, all 10 of the fatherhood books uh, also the podcast from the radio shows and uh, thousands of newspaper columns. I also do a column on men's health called Healthy Men Today, and it's healthymentoday.com. Uh, 